Uh, okay, so uh, I'm excited to share our recent work on a theoretical framework for target propagation, which will be published in NeurIPS this year. And um, so it's joint work with Francesco Carzaniga, Johan Sakens, Joao Sacramento, and Benjamin Greve. So our work is also um, centered around the credit assignment problem in the brain. So you have this brain, which consists of a large interconnected network of neurons, which all do intermediate computations that results in a uh, output of your system. And then the question arises, how does the strength of a synapse needs to be changed to improve the system's global behavior? Now you have a bit two aspects of this credit assignment problem. You have on the one side, the spatial credit assignment problem because different subpopulations of neurons are working together to create an output. So then you need to assign credit over space to all these different neurons. But you also have the temporal credit assignment problem because most of the networks are recurrent. So the computations are extended over time. Now we in incorporated a bit the divide and conquer strategy and we decided to only focus on the spatial credit assignment um, problem because that's already difficult enough on its own. And we used a simple feed forward neural network architecture to investigate it. Um, so in this, the credit assignment problem translates into how can the output uh, send, uh, oh, send feedback signals uh, to the hidden layers so that the hidden layers can also know how to update their synapses. Know that we use rate-based encodings, no spiking neural networks. Um, also a big simplification that we met. I think uh, Friedman in the next talk will tell us a bit more about spiking neural networks. So um, in artificial neural networks, as Arash already told us, the credit assignment problem is generally solved by error back propagation. But however, it is considered biologically implausible by many for three main reasons. So first you have the weight transport issue, which Arash already um, explained. So the feedback path for propagating the errors backward to your network needs to have exactly the same synapses as the forward pathway. However, in biology, these are likely two separate pathways. So they cannot share the synaptic weights that they have. Then you also need to transmit signed errors backward to your network and you need a separate feed forward and feedback phase. Now, target propagation in its current form was introduced by Bengio a couple of years ago um, to solve the first two of these issues by propagating targets backward to your network instead of errors. So again, you have this feed forward phase in which you will propagate an input uh, to your feed forward neural network to the output. But then you will not compute an output error, but instead you will compute an output target and you will back propagate this output target uh, by using inverses of your forward pathway. These inverses will be learned and have their own set of parameters, which we will discuss later. Now you have all these local layer targets and then you can update actually the synapses of each layer by doing a simple gradient descent step on a local L2 loss between the target and the actual activation. And this results in a quite simple delta rule that you, uh, you all are familiar with, I assume. So this target propagation is considered more biologically plausible because it has no weight transport and no signed error signals. However, Bartunov and colleagues show that actually it does not scale well to large problems and there's also no strong theoretical foundation that can be used to provide new insights to actually improve target propagation for these more difficult data sets. So this gap is really the motivation of our work. We want to provide a new theoretical understanding in how a network can be trained by using targets and inverse functions of your feed forward pathway. So as a first main result of our paper, we showed that target propagation with exact inverses, so and this, inver uh, this is the exact inverse of the feed forward path, can be interpreted as a hybrid optimization method. So as a first step, you compute uh, your targets with uh, some sort of approximate Gauss-Newton method. And then in a second step, you use these um, Gauss-Newton targets to update your parameters with gradient um, descent. And the link with Gauss Newton can actually best be seen if you take a Taylor approximation of all these local targets. And then you will see that these targets are actually your normal activation minus your output error 
which is projected by the pseudo inverse of the Jacobian of your output with respect to the considered hidden layer. And so this uh, use of a pseudo inverse of a Jacobian is really characteristic of Gauss-Newton optimization, which is, which is an approximate second order optimization method. Now, usually, however, the networks are non-invertible, which led to the development of difference target propagation. So in difference target propagation, you don't have the exact inverses anymore available, but you learn your inverses with an autoencoder loss. So this autoencoder loss operates layer-wise, and you will always, uh, so for uh, training each feedback mapping, you will send like a perturbed activation, one layer forward and one layer backward again. And then you will compare the reconstructed sample with the original sample and use this uh, distance as the autoencoder loss. And then the feedback parameters are updated by a gradient descent step on this reconstruction loss. Very importantly, different star propagation also introduces in here a correction term on the targets to um, correct for the imperfect inverses that are used. This is very important to actually make it work. Without this correction term, target propagation does not work properly. Um, and then if we take a closer look by also doing a Taylor approximation of the targets in different target propagation, you see the Jacobians of all the feedback mappings appearing here. And if we compare that with uh, the ideal Gauss-Newton targets that we introduced before, um, then we see that this equality actually should hold um, for the DTP targets to be approximately equal to the Gauss-Newton targets. However, unfortunately, we theoretically showed that this is not the case in general, and mainly because this pseudo inverse of your output with respect to a uh, hidden layer is not factorizable over all the layers. So this layer-wise training of each uh, feedback mapping doesn't make a lot of sense because this pseudo inverse um, of the output with respect to a hidden layer cannot be factorized over all the different layers. And then a bit more technically, you also need white noise in this reconstruction loss, which we don't have in uh, different star propagation. You might argue, however, OK, but it doesn't matter that uh, DTP is not linked to Gauss-Newton anymore as long as it succeeds in doing proper credit assignment. However, we showed both theoretically and empirically that this is not the case because a, a large proportion of the update of different target propagation lies inside a null space of the network. And so the component that lies in the null space of the network cannot influence the output of the network at all, so can be considered quite useless. And in this graph, we see that on, on average, almost 75% of a DTP update lies inside of the null space of the network, which makes it quite inefficient. Um, our new variants that we will introduce later largely solve this problem. So as a small summary, we showed for different star propagation that it's not linked to Gauss-Newton anymore and that it leads to quite inefficient parameter updates. Now we solve both of these problems by introducing a new reconstruction loss for training the feedback parameters. And this new difference reconstruction loss reestablishes the connection with Gauss-Newton optimization. So the main differences with the old reconstruction loss is that now we use a wider reconstruction loop. So we send the signal whole way to the output and then backwards again. And we also use in the reconstruction um, the same uh, correction term that different target propagation also use for these targets. So note that different target propagation only uses this correction term for propagating targets for training the forward weights. But now we also use this uh, correction term in the reconstruction loop for training the feedback weights. Um, so if we then take a closer look again, we, uh, we show it theoretically in our paper that if you train your feedback uh, parameters uh, by minimizing this difference reconstruction loss, you actually get this approximate equality. And so then uh, you get that the difference target propagation targets now trained with the difference reconstruction loss are approximately equal to Gauss-Newton targets. So then this hybrid optimization view that we established for target propagation with exact inverses now also holds for difference target propagation with approximate inverses. Now, quite interestingly, this new reconstruction loss also provides a principled way 
and to train direct feedback connection from the output to the hidden layer. So these can be simple linear mappings as shown on the right, but you can also go more exotic and uh, as shown on the right in here, you can, for example, use a shared hidden feedback layer of which then direct feedback connection to all the layers are, um, are drawn. Now, all these theoretical benefits actually also translates into practical benefits. So for example, in here, we show um, the results from Fashion MNIST of the alignment of the updates uh, for the forward parameters with the actual loss gradient. So the updates that true backpropagation would do and um, the ideal Gauss-Newton uh, targets. So the ideal theoretical updates that we derived in our framework. And then our three, uh, our variants are the three lower curves. So all these variants use these new, these new difference reconstruction laws. And you see that alignment is much better than different star propagation, which is here in purple and other controls above it. Um, and then also, if you look at the numbers, you actually also see that uh, our performance significantly increases, although all numbers are quite close to each other. I won't go into detail. You can uh, read the paper if you are interested in having the uh, actual performances. Just want to give you, if you really look at the uh, optimization capability, so how strong the methods are in minimizing a training loss, then you actually get a quite big difference. And you really see orders of magnitude difference in the performance of our new methods compared to the old different star propagation. So with this, um, as a small summary, so we provided a new theoretical framework for target propagation, in which we established that target propagation with exact inverses is a hybrid optimization method between Gauss-Newton and gradient descent. Furthermore, we show that DTP on non-invertible networks loses this connection with Gauss-Newton and leads to inefficient parameter updates. And then lastly, we introduced a new difference reconstruction loss, which restores the connection of DTP with Gauss-Newton and leads to significantly better alignment and performance on various data sets. So with this, I would like to thank uh, my collaborators and our funding, and also you for your interest in our work. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Alexander. Um, that was really impressive. And again, amazing timekeeping. Uh, we have... Uh, all these panelists asking questions again. <laughs> um, but briefly, before we start our questions, do feel free to put a link to um, your paper uh, in the chat if you want. Yeah, uh, yeah I will do. That up. And then I think, um, Arash, you were first. Uh, do you want to ask your question? Um, hi, Alexandra. Uh, thank you for the great talk. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm uh, wondering, uh, because I've uh, uh, been through the same path, I started with target propagation. But then uh, I realized like it's hard, really hard to estimate these inverse functions as you might have seen. Mm -hmm. So do you think uh, estimating error functions are easier than inverse functions in terms of- uh, the, That's functions? a really good question. And um, I, I think for, uh, I indeed had also a lot of trouble with really estimating inverse function, but then if you use quite simple linear mappings, um, it actually was quite okay. I, I think the major problem is that the training can lead to instabilities because you need to um, switch between training your forward weights and training your feedback weights the whole time. And so this mm -hmm. uh, interconnects a lot and can lead to instabilities, but the simpler your feedback mapping, the stabler your training. So then it actually was quite okay. But indeed, like if, if you, um, learn to propagate errors, then you don't need to really learn inverses, but only transposes. And I think this is inherently easier. But however, learning the inverses is, I think, conceptually more interesting, because then you have the same sort of signals that propagate backward as forward. Because forward, you have all these uh, rate, co uh, rate encoded layer activations. And then uh, with target propagation, you also send these rate code activations backwards, whereas with errors, you send some totally different kind of signal backwards. So that's also really what I liked about target propagation. Great, thank you for the answer. Thank you, and next up would be Friedemann. Yeah, yeah thanks for the talk. Um, so it's really nice to see that this Gauss-Newton uh, emerges here. And I think in optimization, optimization theory, that's really the gold standard for most people, I'd say. But in deep learning, it hasn't really 
uh, kicked off because it's associated with some problems. Like some people would say that it gets attracted by all these settle points and things like this. And I was wondering whether you thought about that and whether there are many ways, uh, there, there may be ways that you can actually alleviate this issue in your algorithm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so indeed, like uh, normally in my engineering studies, we also were taught that uh, Gauss-Newton was the gold standard, but in deep learning, it's uh, less so. Um, but there are some important differences as well um, between the target propagation and Gauss-Newton. So um, the, all these links with Gauss-Newton is really for only mini batch size of one which is quite realistic in the brain, but in current deep learning frameworks, you use uh, much bigger the batch sizes, uh, especially for Gauss-Newton. So then uh, this Gauss-Newton framework that I established is also a bit uh, connected to minimal norm um, updates. So actually what you're doing in this target propagation is you compute the minimal norm update to push your output towards um, uh, uh, the target that you provided at the output. And this, I, um, if you would do this then on your whole training set, this is a bit different from Gauss-Newton optimization and does not suffer from really this attraction to settle points. But then, yeah, it's, it's unclear yet what are really all the specific differences. And I think more uh, experimental work also is needed to really um, discover whether it suffers from the same um, problems as Gauss-Newton or not. All right. Thank you so much, Alexander. Um, well done for your talk. Uh, we're going to move on quickly uh, to Friedemann because we will be kicked out.